Hello everyone. Welcome to module 12. We'll talk about sound. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about sound waves, sound intensity and resonance, and finally harmonics. So let's start with section one, sound waves. So here the objectives, we'll try to explain how sound waves are produced, relate frequency to pitch, compare the speed of sound in various media, relate plane waves to spherical waves, recognize the Doppler effect and determine the direction of a frequency shift when there is a relative motion between a source and an observer. So let's start with how sound waves are produced. So every sound wave begins with a vibrating object. So that vibrating object can be a vibrating fork of a prong of a tuning fork or the vibrating sounds of a magnetic disc or the vibrations of a string. So all of these can produce a sound wave. So sound waves are classified as what we call longitudinal waves. So these are called longitudinal waves. So longitudinal waves travel in the form of compressions and rarefactions. So a compression here is the region of the longitudinal wave where the density and the pressure are at a maximum. And a rarefaction is the region of the longitudinal wave where the density and the pressure are at a minimum. So sound waves are longitudinal waves. So the simplest longitudinal wave produced by a vibrating fork can be represented as a sine wave. So here the peak represents the peak here represents compression and the trough here represents a rarefaction. So in the diagram, the crests of the sine curve correspond to the compressions and the trough correspond to the rarefactions. So as discussed, we generally use frequency to determine frequency to refer to waves. So one of the simple definitions is that the frequency is defined as the number of cycles per unit time. So sound waves that the average human ear can hear, we are calling them audible, we call them audible sound waves. And there can be anywhere between 20 to 20,000 hertz. So sound waves with frequencies less than 20 hertz are called infrasonic waves. And sound waves with frequency above 20,000 hertz are called as ultrasonic waves. So for example, whales are uh, organisms that can detect infrasonic waves and bats use ultrasonic waves for uh, travel and communication. So and the human ear is audible between 20 to 20,000 hertz. So the frequency of an audible wave of an audible sound wave determines how high or low we perceive the sound to be, which we call this as pitch. Now the frequency of a sound wave increases when the so therefore the pitch will rise as well. So the frequency of a wave is the objective quantity that can be measured while the pitch refers to how different frequencies are perceived by the human ear. Now let's talk about high frequency sound waves, simply high pitch sounds and low frequency sound waves are low pitch sounds. Next let's talk about the speed of sound. So the speed of sound depends on the medium. Remember this, it depends on the medium and one of the main properties of the medium is the density of the medium. So the speed of the sound depends on the density of the material. So because waves consist of particle vibrations, the speed of a wave depends on how quickly one particle can transfer its motion to another particle. And for example, let's say you have sound waves generally travel faster through solids than through gases because the molecules of a solid are closer. Therefore, the those of the gases are not that close. So thereby uh, reducing the chance of having one particle transfer its motion to the next particle. So the speed of the sound also depends on the temperature of the medium. So this is most noticeable with gases because as the temperature increases, there is higher random motion. The higher the random motion, the more the chance of collision, the more the chance of collision, the higher the chance of uh, the sound traveling faster. So when you have air at zero degree centigrade, the value of the speed of sound is around 30, 331 meter per second, which is the standard value we generally use. At a 25 degree centigrade, it's about 346. At about 100 degree centigrade, it's 366. So again, as you see that the density of the gas is much less, you start noticing that the values are much higher. So because the larger molecules will take a larger amount of time for them to have uh, to travel faster, the lighter the molecules, the faster they travel. So liquids have higher than gases as well as solids have much higher than uh, liquids and gases. So let's talk about the propagation of a sound wave. So sound waves propagate in three dimensions. Remember this, that there is always a three dimensional motion with respect to a sound wave. So we can think of sound waves as spherical waves, genre graphically in terms of two dimensions. So the circles here represent the center of compression, 
we call it the wave front so this is the center of compression and as you go outward you notice the peak here the peak here represents the line here represents the peak which is the compression and the trough is in the middle which represents the rarefaction so you have a series of compressions and rarefactions going in the form of uh, spherical waves that travel from radially outward from the center where the source lies so the radial lines that are perpendicular to the wave fronts are generally called rays and the sine curve is used in our representation to represent one single ray now when the source is at a large distance so when it's at a great relative distance with respect to the wavelength we can approximate spherical wave fronts with parallel planes so think of this as spherical wave fronts become nearly parallel so that's why we can say that these waves are called plane waves and plane waves can be treated as one dimensional waves all traveling in the same direction next let's talk about doppler effect so the doppler effect is an observed change in the frequency when there is a relative motion between the source of the wave and an observer so because frequency determines the pitch the doppler effect affects the pitch heard by the listener because the relative motion because of the relative motion there is a change in the frequency we call it the apparent frequency so that is generally given as v plus or minus v not by v plus or minus vs times the frequency the actual frequency so the here we represents the velocity of sound v o represents the velocity of observer and v s here represents the velocity of the source so for example let's take a scenario where you have an observer here so this is the observer and this is the source so let's say the source and the observer are moving in the same direction so with a velocity of v not and this going with a velocity of vs notice that the sound that is received by the observer is in this direction in this direction v now what would the apparent frequency formula be we are going to take into consideration the the relative velocities between v and v not because v and v not are traveling in opposite directions we can consider them to be added so it becomes v plus by v not over so the v and the v source so v and source are also traveling in the opposite directions so they are going uh, in the say opposite direction so which means now this is also considered v plus vs times f now let's say if the observer is relatively so if the observer is stationary and let's say the source here is moving towards the observer so also the sound is also going in the same direction so how would you write the apparent frequency formula now we know that v not is zero so it becomes v over so what is the relative velocity in terms of v and vs both are traveling in the same direction so it becomes minus v minus vs times f so opposite directions you add and in the same direction you subtract so this is the main way we can classify them the same thing can be done for example you can try this now let's say we have the observer right here the observer is moving moving towards the source and the source is uh, stationary so vs is zero so this is the direction of v so now try to write down the formula for the apparent frequency so this is the idea behind the calculation for doppler effect next let's go into section 2 sound intensity and resonance so here we'll try to calculate the intensity of sound waves relate the intensity decibel level and perceived loudness explain why resonance occurs so sound intensity so whenever as the sound wave travel energy is transferred from one molecule to the next so the rate at which this energy is transferred through a unit area of the plane wave is called as the intensity of the wave so because power is defined as the rate of energy transfer so intensity can also be described in the terms of power so intensity is power by area so intensity the rate of energy transfer over a given area so we can write it as p by 4 pi r square so the main reason we use 4 pi r square is because sound waves are spherical and the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r square so the r here represents the distance from the source now intensity has the unit watt per square meter so watt per meter square and the intensity e equation shows that the intensity decreases as the distance r increases 
So this occurs because the same amount of energy is spread over a larger area. Now, human hearing depends on both frequency and the intensity of the sound waves. So sounds in the middle of the spectrum of frequencies can be heard more easily at lower intensities and than those at lower and higher frequencies. So this is what we call the speech region. So the speech region is the most audible form of the region. So this has around 1 times 10 to the power negative 6 watt per meter square. The threshold of pain is around 1 times 10 to the power. So 1, uh, one watt per meter square. The threshold of hearing is the minimum amount of energy or the minimum intensity required for the sound that is 1 times 10 to the power negative 12. So the intensity of the wave approximately determines the perceived loudness. So here the loudness is not directly proportional to the intensity. The reason is the, that the sensation of the sound is approximately logarithmic in the human ear. So relative intensity is the ratio of intensity of the given sound wave to the intensity at the threshold of hearing. So because logarithmic dependence uses perceived loudness, so we use the term 10 times the logarithmic value. So this is called as the decibel level. So we call it the decibel level. So decibel level, we use this scale as the decibel value. So this is called as the decibel. So the formula for calculating decibel is 10 times log of I over I naught where I represents the intensity of the wave. I naught is the intensity at the threshold of hearing. So this value is 1 times 10 to the power negative 12 watt per meter square. So we use I here as a way for calculating the decibel value. Now based on the decibel value, we can show what kind of sounds have what level of decibel values and what kind of intensity. So a decibel level of zero indicates that we are talking about the threshold of hearing. Uh, a quiet whisper is around 20 decibels, mosquito buzzing around 40 decibels, uh, a vacuum cleaner has around 70 decibels, a busy traffic is around 80 decibels, an auto horn at 1 meter is around 110 decibels. A thunderclap or a machine gun has around 130 decibels and 150 decibels for a nearby jet plane. Now, the maximum threshold of pain, the point to where your body cannot tolerate the amount of sound that is coming out is around 120 decibels. That's the maximum amount of sound that your, the, that your uh, ear can hear over perceived amount of time. The anything above that can only be heard for short amounts of time, but anything above that, if heard too much, can cause... Uh, can cause uh, complete loss of hearing. Next, let's talk about force vibrations and resonance. So let's take a simple example. Let's say we have four pendulums attached with a string and let's say we are, uh, we are uh, vibrating two of these pendulums. What happens here is that when these pendulums vibrate, they are forcing the other two pendulums to vibrate at the same frequency as these two pendulums. Now, the vibration, the pendulum that has the same frequency or the same length of the string and the same mass will start to vibrate more rapidly and increase its wavelength for each interval. This is what we call as a forced vibration. So if one of the pendulums is set in motion, it vibrations can be transferred by the rubber band to the other pendulums, which will also begin vibrating. We call this a force vibration and each pendulum will have its natural frequency based on its length. Now resonance is a phenomena where when the frequency of a force that is being applied to a system matches the natural frequency of the vibrating system, this causes a larger amplitude of vibration. For example, if you vibrate one blue pendulum, that causes the other blue pendulum to also vibrate with the same frequency as that of the vibration. This causes the second pendulum to have much longer and much higher amplitude of vibration. This here is the common sense of resonance. So if one blue pendulum is set to set in motion, only the other blue pendulum whose length is the same will eventually resonate. So let's talk about the next one, the human ear. So the human ear is divided into three sections, the outer, middle and inner ear. Now sound waves travel through three regions of the ear and then transmitted to the brain as nerve impulses through the nerve endings of the basilar membrane. So first you have the outer ear. The outer ear has a small uh, layer which we call the eardrum. The eardrum vibrates the anvil. Anvil, think of it like a small uh, 
you know, a telegraphic uh, touch machine. So it's basically tapping the hammer. Now that particular part will be connected to a hammer which vibrates the basilar membrane. So which we, we call it the inner ear. So the inner ear gets vibrated. Now that sound gets travels through the spirals reaching the end part which is the basilar membrane where you have the nerve endings that capture the sound into its frequency and pitch and directly transfer it through the to the brain which results in the final auditory uh, se auditory sensation through the auditory nerves so that is about human